somewhere near the front. Within sight of the smoke of battle, smoke from the tents of a field hospital tells the story of another battle. Wounded in action. Perforation of left thigh caused by artillery shell. Wounded in action. Left thoraco-abdominal injury by high explosive shell fragment. Wounded in action. Traumatic amputation and severe compound fracture caused by enemy rifle grenade. Every military action inevitably brings in its wake a flow of battle casualties. When immediate and definitive surgical treatment is required, it is given in field hospitals close to the front. Designed in the beginning to provide treatment where fixed hospitals did not exist, the field hospital has become the troubleshooter of all combat medical units. As a station hospital, it may service island bases and remote garrisons. It has great mobility and is highly flexible, being composed of a headquarters and three separate units which can operate as a whole or independently. Here all the units are set up together. It may operate as a holding hospital, such as this one in England, set up to treat the casualties following D-Day. Located near an airstrip, it may function as an evacuation hospital to receive and evacuate casualties by plane. This operation is particularly valuable in mountainous or jungle country. Finally, and most important, it may be placed close to a divisional clearing station to provide immediate surgical treatment near the front. This variety of uses to which the field hospital may be put is possible because of the flexibility of its organization. Under the central control of headquarters are three identical hospitalization units. Also operating under headquarters are the motor pool, chaplain, supply, and principal chief nurse. The three hospitalization units may operate together as a 400 bed hospital or each one may function independently as a 100 bed hospital. Each unit is composed of two sections, administrative and professional. The administrative sections include an administrative assistant mess, and receiving and evacuation. The professional sections include surgical section, medical section, pharmacy and laboratory, dental section, nurses, and x-ray. Servicing the hospital is the administrative section, headed by an administrative assistant who may be called upon to act as the registrar. The administrative department is responsible for the living quarters and mess for nurses and doctors. It is also responsible for the enlisted detachment. But all of the services it performs are aimed toward one ultimate goal, the more efficient care of the sick and wounded. When the field hospital is working in conjunction with a divisional clearing station, the cases admitted are for the most part non-transportable patients. These cases may be carried by litter from the clearing station to the hospital, or they may be brought in directly by ambulance. Non-transportable cases include all those critically wounded, or those in shock from any cause, compound fracture, active bleeding, or abdominal chest and neck wounds. Admitted at the receiving tent for a brief examination, the casualty's field medical record is begun the record which will accompany him wherever he goes. A routine check is made to note his temperature and pulse rate. As in all phases of his care, his earlier treatment can be checked by a glance at his emergency medical tag, which has here been inserted in a field medical jacket. If he is found to be in immediate need of shock treatment, it will be administered in the shock ward. However, if he does not require shock treatment, the next step toward surgery is the preoperative ward, where a careful study is made of the patient's condition. Blood pressure is taken, obvious wounds are checked, and clothes are cut away to make a careful search for further possible injuries. After the patient's blood pressure has been checked, 
A blood specimen is taken to be sent to the laboratory. The blood specimens are centrifuged by an enlisted technician and cross-matched with whole blood from the blood bank. The matching whole blood is then sent back to the preoperative ward for infusion or to the operating tent where it may be needed during surgery. Normally, a trip to the x-ray tent follows the moment the patient's blood pressure has reached a satisfactory level. After the x-ray films are developed, the officer in charge of the shock team usually examines them with the surgeon who will operate on the case. While casualties are being put through the necessary preoperative procedures, the surgical staff is occupied with its own precautions. Dressings, bandages, and surgical gowns are prepared, and autoclaves are used to sterilize them. The water supply may be hastily rigged, the surgeon's boots may be caked with mud, but exactly the same precautions are taken here as in the finest hospital to ensure a completely aseptic operation. Composed of several operating tables at which simultaneous operations may take place, the surgical section is staffed with specialists in bone, chest, abdominal, and general surgery. Some of these surgeons are members of the regular hospital staff. Some are members of attached surgical teams. As varied as the functions of the hospital itself are the operations its surgeons are called upon to perform. Wounded by an artillery shell, this soldier had wounds penetrating left chest, left diaphragm, liver, right diaphragm, and right chest with bilateral hemothorax. Other wounds on the right hand, left thigh, left arm, and a fractured left ulna. He was on the operating table for six and a half hours. A high explosive shell fragment entered this patient's left chest, fracturing the 10th rib and perforating the diaphragm, spleen, splenic flexure of colon, lesser curvature of stomach, and left lobe of the liver. The foreign body was finally recovered on the dome of the liver, beneath the right diaphragm, the entire operation being done transthoracically through the diaphragm. This was a traumatic amputation of the left foot and severe compound comminuted fracture of the right tibia and fibula with a large wound on the right calf. Amputation above the ankle was likely to be necessary, but in this case, the decision was left for a later date. These are typical of the severe wounds rushed for treatment to the field hospital. Chest wounds, belly wounds, severe compound fractures, wounds which must be treated within a few hours if a life is to be saved. Most cases at the field hospital require careful post-operative treatment and nursing. Trained technicians assist in the post-operative ward and do everything from changing dressings to giving intravenous injections. Facilities are available for all types of surgical procedures, including those for aspirating chest wounds and for preventing abdominal distension. In another tent of the professional section, a medical ward is set up to house patients who require non-surgical treatment. The dental officer, in addition to his regular duties, also treats maxillofacial injuries. The pharmacy, which services the entire professional section, carries all drugs essential for running the hospital and keeps a constant supply of oxygen on hand for emergency use, for oxygen is often in demand in the post-operative ward. Evacuation usually takes place within three to 10 days after a casualty has been admitted. Complete medical records are checked and patients are loaded aboard ambulances for the trip back to rear area hospitals. As they go back, their places are taken by new arrivals from the front. And into the night, the work of the field hospital goes on.